Well, it's time now for my daily interview series, Money Talks. And today I'm joined by none other than rugby union legend Matt Dawson, once England's most capped scrum half. Matt played for Northampton Saints, moving on to London Wasps, and he famously played in England's 2003 Rugby World Cup winning side. Since retiring from the great game, Matt's been the team captain on the question of sports, and he's more recently taken part in Strictly Come Dancing and Celebrity MasterChef. What can't this man do? And here he is, just ahead of the final weekend of the Six Nations as England face France. It's former England rugby captain Matt Dawson, my latest guest on Money Talks. Matt Dawson, thanks a lot for joining me here on The Money. I should say at the outset, my son's a huge uh, Northampton Saints fan and we've often admired right. your dummy of the century against the Springboks. Was it back in 1997? <laughs> just just uh, that short 25 years ago, Liam. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, indeed. I will say hello to your boy. Oh, well, you took out four huge Springboks with one by pretending to throw the ball over your head, but then not throwing it over your head. But are you as good at tackling money issues as you are at tackling um, South African and Australian forwards? Well, um, I'd like to think that I am a little bit more astute with my cash uh, than now than maybe I, I was when I was uh, a little bit a little bit uh, younger. Um, yeah, I suppose you know from being a a little whippersnapper and teaching selling advertising security guards you know i didn't have a huge amount of money in those days uh so making sure i was saving and doing all the right things was uh was high high on the priority list i got a little bit loose uh you know classic went for the property abroad and that fell through you know things that unfortunately professional sports people do so i wouldn't say i've been uh, uh I, i've been an absolute shining light a lot of younger people won't realise that when you started out in rugby union, it was still an amateur game. So you were actually doing it for love rather than for money. And your driving ambition to to put yourself forward and make your mark in international rugby, which you did so successfully in the end. And I know you want to talk today, don't you, about some research that Canada Life has been doing on people's aspirations. The fact that people, so many young people in particular, feel that financial insecurity holds back their ability to be ambitious, to be entrepreneurial. It didn't hold you back, did it? But I'm sure you understand why it might. Well, uh, I mean, I, I suppose if I take myself back to when I was you know, 18, 19 years old, um, you know, having financial stability was, of course, um, a priority. Um, every single penny was counted. I was moving away from home. I needed to understand what my food bill was, my electricity bill, uh, my socialising, how much I was going to spend with that, my travel, um, et cetera. And, yeah, I mean, they were, they were incredibly tough times. Now, you know, fortunate for me, I've, I've gone through a professional rugby career and things were okay, but then you retire and you know, get divorced. Um, yeah, you have kids, you know, there's lots of sort of bumps along the way that all of a sudden then take you back to, right, I, I need to focus on the goals that are going to take me forward for me to enjoy the rest of my life. And, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the focus, Liam, particularly over the last couple of years has been around our, our general health and well-being. And quite rightly, there's a focus on mental health, on physical health, on nutrition, diet, et cetera. But we cannot underestimate how important uh, understanding our financial health and what we what we we need to understand to sort of complete that Venn diagram of of three. So yeah, you mentioned that research that Canada Life are doing. It's it's been very apparent that people do want to have aspirations and goals and and dreams financially, but unless they plan appropriately, unless they dedicate themselves sort of day in day out that's where i come from you know it, it's you know you're obviously into rugby yourself into sport 
you know, you don't just get to win the trophies. You, you've got to train every day. You've got to go to the gym. You've got to eat the right things. You've got to prepare right. You've got to rehab. You've got to learn. And I don't think financial health is any different. You, you've, you've got to dedicate yourself to do it. You know, little and often, uh, those incremental gains will get you to where you want to be. I think that's very well put, Matt Dawson. I think there's huge links between financial insecurity and general mental instability and uh, a lack of mental health and well-being. I'd say I'm, I'm a little bit older than you, I think, um, but I think we're both of a generation where even if you weren't earning that much money, I started out in journalism, it's a bit like rugby. It looks very glamorous from the outside, but you don't make much cash, even if you're you know, pretty good at it and operating at a high level. But you know, I could buy a house in my 20s, even on a young reporter's salary. The idea that kids can buy a house in their 20s now is just no way, no way. And I don't think mainstream politicians and even most of the media really get that. So I think this Canada Life Research, which focuses on the importance of financial stability in terms of well-being, is actually really important. Yeah, because the you know, first and foremost, you've got to understand what your goals are, Liam. Uh, and yeah, our, our goals from when we were in that period of time of thinking, do you know what? It's about time I bought myself a house. You know, the reality right now is that that is not anywhere near as simple as a, as a task. So, you know, what are the financial goals that people are striving towards? You know, is it to create a deposit for a mortgage? Is it for a holiday? Is it for survival? Um, you know, do, do they do they see where their job's going to be in two years' time? Are they going to move? Are they going to travel? Um, but the theory behind it is is still very much the same for me. It does it, it, you you can sort of compare it to your health and nutrition. If you wanted to lose weight, you don't just wake up in the morning and say, "Right, I'm going to drop a kilo." You, you've got to go through the processes of making sure that you've got the right food in the fridge and that you're eating at the right times and you're doing some exercise and you're hydrating well and. Salt, sugars, fats, there's loads of key components towards it. And the financial health side of things, are, are, you, know, you, you, you need to plan. Um, and it is tough. It is going to be, and it, it's, it was tough for me then, and it's tough for me now to try and live the life that I thought that I was going to be living for the rest of my life has taken a turn because of other circumstances. And, you know, lots of people are in those circumstances, but I am going to have to do things in a different way or rather have been doing things in a different way to get myself back on, to get myself back on track with it. And I've, you know, it's, I've enjoyed doing it. I like the discipline. I'm, okay. I might have a little bit of more self-belief and confidence than others, but I like the discipline behind that because if I get to my goals, then I feel the sense of achievement and I'll be celebrating those goals as well. Dawson, you're, you are a hugely respected figure, not just on the rugby pitch. You were fantastic on Question of Sport with Tuffers. Um, I think you've got a great future ahead of you doing whatever you want to do, and I wish you all the, the best. And I just want to ask you, can the English beat the French? Can the Irish beat the Scottish and get a St. Patrick's weekend championship? <laughs> I, I, think, uh, I think Ireland will... And quite rightly, fancy their chances against uh, Scotland. They are a very, very good side. Uh, England, I would love to think that those England boys have travelled to Paris thinking yeah. there is one party Imagine. to spoil. Let's have it. As my Irish cousin says, we'll be waving the St George's flag at least for once. <laughs> Matt Dawson, rugby legend. Great to have you here on my show. An honour and a privilege. Many similar conversations with major figures in the worlds of business and finance and indeed sport, plus dozens of other extended Money Talks interviews now on my Money Talks podcast on the GB News YouTube channel or via the GB News app.